We are ready to move on to the fourth and fifth project options for you. Project four is conducting your own research study. So if you were so enamored with methods of research, Education 504, that you want to conduct your own study, this is your chance. You will start off with a research question. You then will design your study. You need to establish the variables figure out which research design, such as ex post facto, descriptive, figure out what data you want to collect, how you're going to collect the data, then you collect the data and you analyze the data. Notice, if you remember, research projects have five components and one of those is a lit review. So you will do a lit review with this paper as well with a minimum of 15 references. And if we go and look at the outline for this type of project, you will see those five um, sections show up because you're writing this as if you were writing a research article to be published. So the beginning looks the same. Some different things in a study you have to define, operationally define the terms you're using. You have your lit review. Section three is your methodology. Section four would be your data presentation and analysis. And then section five is your summary, conclusions. You look at validity, threats, that type of thing. So you'll notice that the research studies out of all of the projects are the ones that are shortest in terms of page length. But that is because in a research study, you spend so much of your time doing the actual data collection and analysis. And oftentimes you can present your results using graphs or tables um, that really cut down on how much you need to write. So a research study is great if you have, you know, one of those kind of burning questions. I wonder about this. I wonder if this is working or how people feel about this. That would be the time to do a research project. And most recently, I've had one, um, a couple just recently, one looking at uh, bilingual versus monolingual students in terms of their reading ability. Um, that was an ex post facto study. I had another one that did a quasi-experimental study where two, two different groups in tutoring received, um, one had the same old way that they had been tutoring kids to improve their, I think it was the reading skills, and then the other one had a newer approach, and they compared to see what kind of results each of the groups got. The final project, and I don't get as many of these, it's really a variation of the research project, where if you're at a site and you have something already going on that maybe you've in instituted a new discipline plan or you're trying out um, a new process for recess or lunch or, or maybe you're trying out some new curriculum and nobody has, has really gone back to see how effective it is, that's the time when you can do a research or an evaluation study. You need to figure out what needs to be evaluated, how you're going to evaluate it. You also have a lit review where you are looking at what the research says about whatever you're evaluating. And then at the end, you write up your findings and your recommendations. So if we go and look at the outline for that type of project, you will see almost there. Cover page abstract, you have your statement of need, lit review, your evaluation design where you describe what tool you're going to use to collect data to do your evaluation, how you're going to do that. Then you have your write-up of your evaluation. What were the results? What were the next steps? Once again, these papers tend to be shorter in nature because you're doing a lot on designing that evaluation tool or tracking down an evaluation tool that already exists. So those are your five options. 
Let's take a look now then at what you need to do to get started. The first thing is I would recommend that you brainstorm the topics in education that you are the most passionate about. And from there, then you're going to think about, all right, and you have a list. If somebody asks me, I'm passionate about cooperative learning, I'm passionate about uh, dual immersion, working with English learners. I'm passionate about student engagement. I'm passionate about working with diverse populations. I'm passionate about helping lower socioeconomic students succeed and move on to college. Those are all things that come to mind just off the top of my head. From there, you want to pick, all right, what am I most passionate about? Or which do I feel like I could contribute the most to? And you've got to pick something you're interested in. These are all large projects. So if it's not something you're really interested in, like I'm going to pick this because I think it's going to be easy, you're not going to finish. Trust me. Then you're going to submit a written proposal to me. That sounds scary. I want a purpose statement, which is one sentence about which of the five projects you're choosing and what your topic is. And then just give me a short paragraph describing the rationale and the need for this project. I want to see where you're coming from. I gave you two samples here. You can see they're not very long, but you can see I'm labeling which of the five, what is my topic, and then why. Why is this important? Here's another example. And we've already, I've already showed you the date on the syllabus when that's due. Submit it to me. I will get back to you that day, the next day, give you some feedback. Sometimes people pick these huge topics. For example, I want to study all the disabilities. <laughs> I think that would be a lifelong paper, right? Let's narrow it down to a couple, right? Do you want to look at learning disabilities? Do you want to look at some behavioral issues? And let's, let's narrow the focus down. So I'll give you some feedback like that, or if it looks good, I'll say, go for it, looks good. And then you have the green light to go ahead and start working on it. One of the things that I want to suggest to you, especially if you're doing the first two lit surveys, sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to get all 50 sources first. Don't do that. That's overwhelming. Come up with some headings, brainstorm. You can always tweak them, right? Then look for like five sources at a time. Download them. You can kind of scan them to see if your headings are on track and if, if not, adjust. Then read one, write it up. You can worry about wordsmithing and adding transition words, but write up the key details, add it onto your reference list, and you're done. You're going to see your paper grow um, at a much faster rate than you would if you just have this stack of 50 sources. The other tool I want to show you that I think will help you organize is what we call a Gantt chart. Here is a sample Gantt chart that we did up on an Excel spreadsheet so that you can just type in, in it. This is a sample. Under the content link, there's also a blank one that you can fill in. Here's how a Gantt chart works. You're going to fill in your weekly dates from now until the presentation night. And then whichever one of the five projects you choose, chunk it. By that I mean break it down into bite-sized pieces. So This is an example of one of those proposals that I showed you about doing the integrated units. Here you can use an X if it's something that you can get done in that week. You can do arrows if it's going to go over longer than a week. And this then allows you, it's like your timeline. So you know, all right, here's what I should be working on now. Or there's some overlap. I can be doing this and this at the same time. And it often helps to kind of start back, backwards. Like, okay, I know I need to submit on this date. What do I need to have done here, here, here? And this then becomes, I would print it out, put it on your refrigerator door, your mirror, whatever, so that you can keep yourself on track. And if you know, 
okay, I know the week of Thanksgiving is going to be crazy, then don't schedule anything there. There's something very satisfactory about being able to cross it off, like I'm done, I'm done. And before you know it, you'll be down here on step 10, right? You're like, wow, I can't believe I already started that. So this is just a sample and then there's a blank one. You don't have to use this. You don't have to show it to me. But I've had so many students tell me in the past how helpful this was for them to really outline it and have a, have a game plan. All right. So I have given you tons of information in these videos. Please let me know if you have any questions. And just as a reminder, um, get your one-on-one -on -one appointment set up. Start working on your proposal and you can start reviewing the APA presentations as well.